Aloha everyone, Chad Owens here, and this is the CO2 Rundown. Man, I got the distinct pleasure of being here on this beautiful afternoon with the Soji brothers. I got Eric Thomas Soji, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, and I got Kavika Tenefis. Tenefis <laughs> Soji, I appreciate the assistance there because that's what I wanna talk about, man. You got the Tenefis and Thomas as middle names. Uh, first of all, Tenefis, like, you got, tell, tell us about that's that. That's my mom's maiden name. It's Norwegian background. Uh, you're gonna have to bring them on the show next to ask why I got all of the exotic cool names. <laughs> well, you got a couple honks for that because yeah. that's, that's hella cool. Thomas, third, are you just standard? Just third kid. They forgot about me. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get too creative, they didn't get too creative. with you. Well, look, uh, man, guys, Shoji. When I think of volleyball in Hawaii, that name comes to mind, right? Legendary coach Dave Shoji and his sons here. You know, just got done with the Olympics, two-time Olympians. Man, first of all, Shoji, legendary. I talked to you guys before this. That name, when did it even occur to you guys that legacy and what and what your dad meant to this entire state and and the, and the volleyball as a whole in the country oh I mean we grew up going to every UH sports and volleyball was our thing obviously I think probably around high school we realized like you know our dad's a name he is the face of volleyball in this state uh, we look around we, we see beach we see grass we see indoor and we think of our dad and he started volleyball here it's a, it's a cultural thing here in Hawaii and I think he's part of the reason for that yeah Beaks yeah, going to Aloha Stadium, watching you back in the day, <laughs> you know, making the stand shake a little bit, and you go around and oh, hey coach, hey coach, hey coach, left and right, you know, yeah. and it was it was awesome to experience that culture at all the different sporting events. Um, you start to realize he's a very familiar, friendly face in the community, and and how much him and and our family, but especially the sport of volleyball, is loved in in these islands. Yeah, loved it is, man, and we loved. The fact that you guys were representing the United States, but representing Hawaii in this year's Tokyo Olympics, man. Talk to the people about that experience. Yeah, very unique. I think after Rio, we didn't really know what to expect. A lot of COVID protocols, a lot of masks, a lot of tests, um, but amazing experience. You know, we were there representing Hawaii, our country. Couldn't ask for anything more, especially in the sport of volleyball. and. You know, we did our thing. Unfortunately, it didn't end as well as we wanted to, but the experience is there, and we're proud to represent our state and the U.S. for sure. Amazing. Yeah, you know, it's it's just a crazy experience, especially what what's going on around the world and how much this pandemic has touched everyone's lives. And so that added a little bit of kind of uncertainty and difficulty. But like Eric said, tremendous experience, awesome to meet other athletes in the village. It's especially special to know how much pride and joy we bring to the people and to the kids here. I think we really felt that, especially after the loss, people were heartbroken with us. And, and that touched us because we realized like, wow, we're, we're representing a lot of people and they're with us on this journey. Um, and it, it was just a special thing to give the people of Hawaii that type of pride, and especially the kids too. The kids love Olympics, you know? Oh yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's where they wanna be and you know, you touched on something. And, and I speak on adversity a lot. You know, making it to the elite level as a pro, national player, Olympics is, is tough. And then you, add, you sprinkle in an extra layer of adversity this year at, at the Olympics. And I talked about this on one of my segments on the show, the resilience of professional elite level athletes. And all the athletes at this year's Olympics showed tremendous resilience. And to me, as a former professional, elite level athlete myself, I really looked at that and was like, man, wow, like, that's amazing. Like, I, it's tough, but I've, I, in my career, never had to go through that kind of adversity. And you guys all still showed up each and every day. You guys competed, you guys worked hard. And to me, that's the true inspiration for all of us here in Hawaii, all of you young, aspiring athletes, volleyball players, every sport, it takes resilience and it takes a tremendous focus and mindset to get to that level and even at that level, you're going to experience difficulties. So just wanted to commend you guys on that, man. And we, we appreciate you guys. And we're so proud of that. All right. So obviously, you guys are back home in Hawaii, getting to enjoy some downtime. But I noticed not too often. 
Talk to, talk to us about why you guys don't get to come and enjoy home very often. You got that. Okay, we both play professionally overseas because that's where we make most of our money. We don't have an indoor professional league in America, so we all go overseas to Asia or Europe. And then if you're on the Olympic team, you come home and you play in the summers on the Olympic team. So there's a summer season and a winter season. Therefore, no unfortunately, off no off season and no, only a couple of weeks at home a year usually. Okay, that's awesome. Well, look, I know you guys are enjoying it while here. So, so when you guys do have this downtime, what do you guys like to do while home other than eating the local kind grinds? Because we know that's that's top of the list. That's a great question because nothing else. This guy nothing <laughs> else. This guy spends half a day doing his TikToks on local foods. TikToks TikToks? Hey, how can they follow you? Let them know. Cause I hear you got about three hundred thousand followers and you are a guru on TikTok. What is it? Hi everyone. <laughs> You can follow me on TikTok at, at the libero, like my position in volleyball. Yep. Wow. The That's it. libero. No, 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 it's He's the, the only one out there in the whole world. The libero. Wow, I that love is it. The, that is the name. Okay, well, other than doing TikToks and eating local foods, what else is there, Vix? We got the beach. I got the golf courses. I like that in my downtime. Clears the head a you little bit. Go play. Let's go. Okay. Next episode. Oh, they, 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 they want to be back on. We, we will see them back on because there's golf, there's ping pong we're talking about. There's a lot of things we're going to be doing together. We, we got some other stuff coming. We got some other stuff today. coming. Uh, and speaking about what's coming, what's next? You guys are headed to Turkey? Yep. Right? I'm going to go play in the Turkish League over there. I'm contemplating retirement in the next year or so. We'll see. But So if you got a job out there, let me know. <laughs> Hit them up. And Eric, you are going to be getting ready. You're still in the grind mode. You're in, a, you're in it. You got another Olympics to prepare for, which is coming up in 2024. Yeah, like Kavika, I'll be heading to Poland uh, this season for my 10th professional season. Kavika's going on 12. Woo! Three years to Paris, so going to keep grinding, going for that, and hopefully making that one. Man, that's unbelievable. Well, look, man. Enough talk. I know you guys are waiting. You guys seen the volleyball court behind me. It's the beach volleyball. We out here. We're going to see how elite he is. I can be <laughs> in volleyball. I've been talking that to these boys, so I got to get it. Uh, that's it. So look, let's jump on into the sand. Let's, let's get it. You guys seen that, right? Um, that was fun. I got a little action. I got, I got spiked on, and let me tell you, that thing was some heat. But I'm, we're gonna transition into something where I think I have a little bit better chance. Spike ball. Let's go. All right. Like I said, man, we transitioned over to spike ball. We're gonna do a little, little mini tournament. By myself, Kaviks, Eric. Eric is Eric the champ? Is he the? Thinks he's the champ. Thinks he's okay, so so the winner of this takes on Eric, the champ. Uh, we're gonna play up to three, uh, but the difference is because it's one on one, we get to touch the ball three times. If you want, yeah, if you want, right before you hit it back on the net. So we're gonna get in. I'm the defending CO2 rundown champion, so I'm trying to defend my crown right Underdog. now. Underdog. Although we've Underdog. never played spike ball on this show ever before. So anyway, let's get started. Ball, you gotta move. All right, it's two one. 
I gotta got force this. I gotta force this. Uh, oh, shoot! Uh, 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 oh, that's a point for him. I had him back up on his heels. I was like, ah! Oh. For those that don't know, double touch on the net. Double touch. No good. No good. All right, look, look. Let the Joe get out of this thing. Let the pros show you guys how it's done. confidence and the ability to really spike that thing, you know, like, like he does this every day. You know, myself, Deeks, we kind of had to almost finesse it to make sure we get on the net, but the champ himself, the liberal, Eric Thomas Shoji, showed everyone why he's the spike ball champ. Whew, man, hey, look, I just want to thank the Shoji brothers for coming up and showing out today on the seal to run dog guys thank you so much uh the champ um uh, kubiks we gotta let them know how to follow you i'm at k show g7 on uh, all my social handles come yeah, and reach out let's you guys go all the best. let's go thank you guys so much and guys good luck man see you next time yeah, no, no, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>